Chief Steve Caballero and I currently oversee the Criminal Investigations Bureau. Uh, before I introduce the commander to our homicide division, uh, he's going to give you some details. I want to really encourage everybody watching to harness the power of social media. So on Milwaukee's uh, Police Department's Facebook page, we have the two photos that are behind us. And so I'm asking everybody to share those photos with everyone they know in an effort to gain some type of insight on where this suspect uh, is. Uh, we need your help. Um, we believe the suspect is armed and dangerous. So anything you can do to spread those photos could help break this case. So, um, Captain uh, Thomas Casper will give some details regarding uh, the investigation up to this point. Good evening. I'd like to first begin by thanking the FBI for all the support they have given the Milwaukee Police Department regarding this investigation. They are here with us today. I wanted to acknowledge them. I also want to thank uh, John Chisholm and the representatives from the District Attorney's Office for working so closely with us. We should have a complaint uh, within the next 60 minutes. Yesterday at about 1 p.m., Milwaukee police squads were dispatched to a shooting in the 6300 block of North 91st Street. When they arrived, they found two adult females lying on a driveway to an eight unit apartment building. The first female was 24 years, eight, 24 years of age, a resident of Nevada, and she was suffering from numerous gunshot wounds. Although medical attention arrived promptly, she was pronounced dead at the scene. The second female is a 28 year old Milwaukee resident. She was shot multiple times she was transported to a local hospital where she's currently being treated. While at the scene, a third person was located, a 35-year-old Milwaukee man, suffered a graze wound to the left shoulder. He was also transported to a local hospital where he was treated and released. The shooter and suspect has been identified as Darias, D-A-R-I-A-Z, L. Higgins, 28 years of age. He has previous arrests in Nevada, Minnesota and Florida. The Cadillac, which was originally originally described in the Amber Alert, was located overnight in Miami, Florida. That was a vehicle that he had been arrested in in Minnesota last month, and that vehicle has been accounted for. We are very concerned about the missing two-year-old, Nolani Robinson. Her whereabouts have not been accounted for, and we want to ensure her safety. We are asking Mr. Higgins to take her and drop her off someplace safe, a family member's house, a fire station, a hospital, any place safe so that law enforcement can take custody of her. As the chief stated, Mr. Higgins is believed to be armed and dangerous, and right now his whereabouts are unknown. So uh, with that, we can answer just a few general questions again, like uh, Captain, Casper had said, we expect a criminal complaint probably within the hour. Uh, if not, then tomorrow morning. Uh, those will probably answer most of the questions that you have. Uh, again, I want to reemphasize for everyone to go to Facebook, look at the photos, share them with your contacts. Um, it, we're, we're, we're expecting that um, the suspect that we're looking for is going to go to a gas station. Uh, maybe a fast food joint to get some food, uh, things like that. So the more people that have these photos, the better. Can you talk about the timeline? How long between the... Do you have an updated vehicle description we could share? Uh, we don't. Um, that's obviously one thing that we're investigating, but at this moment we don't. What state, state, if any, do you have any idea or have received any tips that he's in the state of Wisconsin still or he may be out of the state? You're, that's a, it's a good question, and, and really that's the reason why we're emphasizing for everyone to get the, get the photos, see them on Facebook, and forward them to all the contacts, because we, at this point, we don't know. Can you, can you talk to us about the timeline? She was shot at, or the mother of the child was shot at about 1 in the afternoon. Why did it take until 9.30 for an Amber Alert to go out? Um, I don't know uh, specifically in this case, but um, 
I know there's specific things that have to meet the Amber Alert qualifications. I believe the vehicle may be one of them. So again, it's it's going through the investigation, understanding uh, what's happening in the investigation, and then understanding that now we're trying to account for a, a two-year-old, um, and we when we weren't able to do that, again, we, we started with the Amber Alert. So in a case like this, it is a matter of urgency for everyone in the police department to put out uh, the Amber Alert as soon as we meet those qualifications and then continue with the investigation. At what point? Can you confirm the relationship between the suspect and the missing child and the missing child and the victim here? Um, it's my understanding that they're, they ha had a relationship. Uh, they weren't husband, wife, but uh, I believe they were boyfriend, girlfriend. And the victim, she's the, the missing girl's mother, correct? Yes. Okay, so that yes. is the daughter. So, yes. So again, I want to reemphasize to um, to everyone watching, go on up Milwaukee Police Department Facebook, just look at the photos, share them with your contacts. It's only a matter of time before uh, the subject goes to a gas station or fast food place and, um, and somebody will recognize him. As you can see from his picture, he's got tattoos on his face which are quite distinguishable. So again, um, I anticipate our public information office uh, distributing those criminal complaints to you via electronic email. Um, and if you have further questions, we can answer them tomorrow. Can you tell us what's up? Thank you.